Hi, I'm Dan Cardipassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale GP38-2 locomotive from Athern Genesis. My model is detailed and decorated for Southern Pacific in the HLCX leasing scheme. Athern offers these GP38-2 models in two versions. The MSRP for the DCC Ready version is $219.99. The MSRP for the version with Soundtrack Tsunami 2 DCC and Sound is $319.99. I paid $186.99 for my DCC Ready model in December 2022 from ModelTrainStuff.com. We'll start the engine at 100 possible points. The model is packed in a sturdy cardboard box. Inside the box are a couple information sheets with exploded view drawings and parts lists. Soft foam surrounds a two-piece plastic cradle that holds the model. Flexible plastic on top of the model offers some additional protection against scratches. The handrails on the long hood have foam protectors. This is an excellent box that should do a good job protecting the model for storage and transport. The EMD GP38-2 is a 2,000 horsepower four-axle freight locomotive introduced in the early 1970s. It replaced the earlier GP38 model. SP4864 was built in October 1972 as Louisville and Nashville 4090. After being retired by later owner CSX, this and a number of other similar units went to helm leasing. These GP38-2s were rebuilt by AMF Montreal. SP ended up with 28 of these units. Most were delivered in the SP speed lettering scheme. By the time this unit was delivered to SP in June 1996, the UP merger was just months away. Helm left the unit in their maroon and blue leasing scheme with simple SP initials on the hood. This was one of the last locomotives delivered to SP before the merger. I found several photos of this locomotive on the internet and the model appears to be a fairly close match overall. It has the correct style of Blomberg trucks and the correct short fuel tank. It does a good job capturing the look of the real locomotive. The horn casting appears incorrect. A photo from 1996 shows the unit with a five chime horn. Other photos suggest that the horn may have been changed at some point, but none of the photos I found show a horn that matches the one on the model. Likewise, the firecracker style antenna does not appear in photos before 2000. Roof shots are hard to come by, but it appears that in 1999 and earlier, the engine had a short Sinclair style antenna. The painted over class lights on the short hood are incorrect. These should have round blanks. In back, the number boards are just painted on. I don't know if the rear number boards in the real unit were lighted, but it would take some shell surgery on this model to light these. There should be a round blank on either side of the hood end near the roof. None of these are major issues, but it's still stuff some modelers might want to fix. I'm taking five points for all of it. The paint on the model is opaque and thin enough that it only slightly softens small details like the latches on the doors. The markings are crisp and free of voids. The engine doesn't have a lot of small stencils, but most of the ones it does have are legible with magnification. The handrails are made of a flexible plastic that should stand up to modest handling. The stanchions are mostly straight up and down on my model when viewed from the side. The trucks have freestanding brake lines. The fireman's side front truck has a speed recorder and cable. In front, the engine has freestanding wire grab irons and separately applied windshield wipers. The numbers in the front number boards appear to be applied under or on the back of a layer of clear plastic glazing, making them look like numbers behind glass. Lower down, the pilot has an uncoupling lever, an MU stand, and hoses. The cab windows slide, though they tend to move around on their own. I may end up picking a position and using a tiny dab of glue to hold them in place. It's a little hard to see, but the cab has a complete interior. The cab has photo etched sunshades and wind deflectors. In back, the model has more freestanding wire grab irons. The rear pilot is similar to the front, but also has spare knuckle holders. On top, the dynamic brake fan has a photo etched grille. The radiator fans also have see-through grills. I really like how the fan centers are the same color as the body. The model also has freestanding lift rings. Underneath the sill, there's enough detail to make the model look good while sitting on the track. All of the axles are powered and all the wheels pick up current. The model has McHenry plastic knuckle couplers on both ends. Looking for a match in the horizontal center line, the front coupler is at the correct height. The trip pin on the rear coupler was very low on my model. I tried to adjust it with my KD trip pin pliers so that I could do the coupler height test and the trip pin broke. The rear coupler is high, but it's possible that I threw the coupler out of alignment, so I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt here. The rearmost wheel set is narrow and gauge, so I'm taking five points. There is no body wobble. The model weighs 14 ounces even. Peak drawbar pull topped out at 3.5 ounces on my force gauge, really good for an engine of this size. I'm running the locomotive on DC. The headlights are directional. The forward headlight is on when the locomotive is moving forward. 
the rear headlight comes on in reverse. The model seems to have a constant brightness circuit so that the headlights are visible even at low speeds. They're not especially bright, however. The model runs smoothly and the mechanism is reasonably quiet. The dynamic brake section on the model comes off for access to the model's electronics. Because of this, it's not a good idea to pick up the model by the dynamic brake bulge. The easiest way to install DCC would be to replace the 21-pin dummy plug on the factory circuit board with a 21-pin decoder. Be careful of the wires when putting the dynamic brake section back on. If you want to take the model apart, first remove the couplers on both ends. The upper parts of the draft gear boxes fit really tight and took some coaxing to remove. Now you can remove the shell. Again, be careful of the wires that run to the headlights. There is a removable weight in the rear of the model. This area could be used for a speaker if you wanted to install sound. I'll need to loosen this to get to the rear truck. Now I'll unclip the rear truck wires from the light board. With the weight off, I'll use a small flat bladed screwdriver to remove the worm gear cover. Then I can remove the drive shaft. To get to the wheels, I'll need to unclip the bottom cover on the truck. The truck doesn't seem to want to come apart as easily as some others I've seen with a similar design. It's a very tight fit. I was able to spread the side frames on one end just far enough apart to remove the narrow wheel set. If you need more clearance, I was able to pry the side frames away from the gearbox using a flat bladed screwdriver and a twisting motion on the center support. Use caution as you don't want to break these parts. Once the wheel set is out, I'll gently twist and pull until the gauge matches the NMRA gauge. While I have the wheel sets loose, I'm going to paint the wheel faces with some testers railroad tie brown. After putting the chassis back together, I filed a little material from the sides of the draft gear boxes to make it easier to get them in and out. KD-158s drop into the Atherin boxes. I had to file the top of the front draft gear box slightly to get the coupler height to come out right. Let's see what we've got. Some of the small details on the model were incorrect, so I took five points in the prototype accuracy category. One wheel set was out of gauge, so I took five points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 90 out of 100 possible points, which would be an A- on a report card. This is a nice model and it deserves a green signal. I think Atherin did a really nice job on this model. If you're looking for some unusual late 90s era SP power for your HO scale layout, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>